Hello and welcome to another sketchbook tour. Long time since the last one, it feels like. This one is very highly anticipated, for me at least. If you saw my video a few weeks ago of me finishing this bad boy off, working on those multimedia spreads, um, this is it. I, I feel like I've mentioned this sketchbook in a couple of my vlogs, a couple of my, of my videos, and it's finally, for the most part, complete, so I'm excited to share it with you guys. Same deal in most of my other sketchbook tours. I'm not sure how long this one's gonna be. It is like a decently thick sketchbook, but um, it's kind of deceiving because there's a bunch of uh, pages in here that, you know, are just random bullshit and also the pages are really thick so not sure how quick this will go but i will do a quick flip through at the end um so if you want to skip to just seeing that and skip through the commentary here's the timestamp. bye bye nice knowing you thanks for thanks for stopping by but as for everybody who's staying for the commentary aka my favorite people <laughs> let's hop right into it so, ta-da, on our first page, we have some fruit stickers. Very chic. What does it mean? Art, you know? Um, yeah, this sketchbook was, um, I actually made this. I mentioned this in other videos, but I, I bookbinded it myself because I think I, I saw like a couple YouTube videos about bookbinding and I was like, I can definitely do that. And then so I did, and it's kind of cool. But yeah, I just had like a pad of old watercolor paper and um, decided to do that. So this was literally, okay. So I'm gonna preface this by saying that like the first few pages of this um, sketchbook are very blah, very messy. I feel like I was not taking it seriously at all. Something about the word multimedia to me was like very kind of juvenile. And I thought it was like scrapbooking and, and I don't know, just like pasting random bullshit everywhere. And so, yeah, I don't know. The first few pages are kind of whatever, but yeah, this was literally just like some print on a notebook of a girl that I painted over and just like did not care about whatsoever. But yeah, anyway, sorry to finish my thought. So this sketchbook I made for a multimedia class. I believe it was in second or third year that the class was all about like playing with different media and different materials and things like that. Um, it was an illustration or a drawing class, so there was like some aspect of like figure drawing and portrait and things like that. So um, a bunch of the pages, uh, especially at the beginning, have to do with those kind of assignments. So again, another page of just like random doodles, whatever bullshit. But the next few pages here, I think we had an assignment to paint portraits using only the primary colors of like classmates and things. This was my one classmate, David. And yeah, it's fine. I mean, I must have done this in watercolor, which I think of all of the multimedia mediums or paints or whatever, I was the most comfortable with. So yeah, it's fine. It's very blotchy. There's like a complete lack of like any hard edge or detail. It's all very blobby. Um, I was channeling like my inner Monet without like the skill. <laughs> and then hello Beyonce. Nice to see you here. This was just a, I think I had, um, what album was it? I bought the physical copy of the self-titled album that she had out and it came with this like booklet of photos and stuff. So I just cut them out and collaged it because that's what I thought <laughs> multimedia was. I thought it was just collage. And then, yes, another portrait. This is of the same person. This one, I feel like I put in a little bit more effort. Um, I think I was inspired by like the, I'm a big fan of um, the profile view of people, especially when they have like interesting shapes of like their nose or like their brow bone or whatever. So yeah, tried a little harder on this one, played with like some splattering and things like that. We can see it like starts to get kind of muddy and stuff in a bunch of the areas. I feel like that's like a, I don't know, very rookie mistake when mixing paints and things like that is that, you know, if you mix the wrong things, things will get muddy. Not saying that I'm an expert in mixing paints whatsoever. Um, this is just what I'm observing happened here. 
And then, yeah, these were a couple more portraits. This is of my friend Anna. Shout out, Anna, if you're watching. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah, still using watercolors. Same kind of deal. I guess the assignment wasn't to use just primary because I'm obviously using green here. <laughs> um, and then this is of another David, um, my, my friend Melissa's ex. Shout out, David. I hope you're doing well. <laughs> but yeah, these were, these were fine. I feel like after you know, the success of this one. I was kind of like trying to get the next ones over with. Um, so I pretty obviously didn't try as hard, but that's fine. You know, we're all about experimenting. I feel like I was taking the, um, the concept of like experimenting with different materials and mediums to like kind of do things a little more low effort and try a little less hard because I, thought it didn't matter because it's experimentation, so nothing's wrong. Yeah, so anyways, this is the next assignment. I believe we had to do portraits, multimedia portraits of um, famous people. So I chose three. First one I did was Bill Murray, iconic um, old guy, <laughs> iconic old white male. Yeah, this one's fine. I guess it kind of looks like him. I forget what I, oh, okay. So I wrote down what I used for each of them. This one is watercolor, soft pastel, pencil crayon. And then I guess this is like, paper. This is supposed to be his collar, I guess. Um, and Copic marker. Um, so that's kind of cool, I guess. I, I think there was like some play with like color and using um, like blues for the shadows and things like that, or at least like trying to. It does, it did end up being like a little bit messy, but whatever, it was the first one. Um, and then this one, I just have a piece of paper to divide them so that they don't smudge against each other. This next one is of Clint Eastwood, and I like this one. I think this one is a little bit more successful than Bill over here. Um, Clint Eastwood has like very strong angular features, so I tried to like play that up and use that to my advantage and emphasize um, certain things about him. And I feel like the playing with the angles is what made it more successful because I was able to kind of stylize it in a fun way. So yeah, for this one I used a little bit of a harder pencil, I guess. So pencil, watercolor, gouache, crayon, and soft pastel. So gouache, we all know my um, interesting, complicated relationship with gouache. Uh, I always viewed it as like this unattainable skill that is like so mystical, magical that I have seen so many people paint magnificent, beautiful paintings with, but whenever I would play with gouache, it was like a complete mess and I had no idea what was going on. Um, so that was my kind of intro to gouache. It really is not that crazy. Like I was being dramatic for sure, but <laughs> yeah, that's where it started. And then yeah, another page of just like whatever bullshit. I think I painted this one randomly, um, just with watercolor. Um, must have just had like an idea with like a girl and goldfish, very like anime vibes for sure. And then this is the final portrait in the series of famous old men, I guess. <laughs> Um, this is Beat Takeshi. He's the iconic uh, comedian turned actor from Japan, and he was in Battle Royale, is one of his most famous roles. So yeah, I drew him. He has a very interesting face because he had a stroke, so half of his face is kind of um, limited in its movement. Um, so you have that like kind of crooked smile that he does. I like this one the most. Um, I did it with watercolor, charcoal, prismacolor, soft pastel, and brush pen. So yeah, I think maybe the reference image had really good like hard shadows and lighting and things that I could like easily pull from. So um, I feel like this was the most successful, maybe because I spent the most time on like trying to get his likeness right. So it really looks like him, um, but also in the execution of the paint and things I think was successful as well. I think the colors that I chose were, were smart. It was very limited, just like basically red and navy. So um, I think that helped with the final uh, success rate. <laughs> All right, and then I feel like the next few spreads are just uh, some figure drawing. So in that class, we did have a couple figures come in, I think a couple different times um, and pose for us. And then we had to draw them, but also play with paints with them, which I feel like I've never done before. Usually when I had done any kind of live figure drawing, it was just with pencil. So it was interesting, like trying to be fast 
with paint as well. I believe I was using watercolor. And these are pretty cool. Like I like how, you know, the the paints you're able to like add in a little bit more dimension, play with like light and shadow, and you get this kind of like painterly aspect with it because you're having to go so quick, which like usually I feel like when I do that or when I try to be painterly, I kind of get shot in the foot or I shoot myself in the foot because it's it, it ends up being like too messy and blobby. Um, but I think that's because I have too much time and I like tend to overwork it while still trying to be like messy and painterly. While with these ones, I was like literally given like very quick, it says five minute time limits. So um, the like quickness uh, really comes through in like a charming way. And then this spread is another just random fucking bullshit thing again, honestly. Um, I collaged my grad photos from high school. I, every time I look at this, I feel like I was like going through something when I did this because I really hated my grad photos. Like I thought I looked so bad and so like awkward and weird and not good. I, I There was a lot of self-hate going on and I think making this collage um, and then like painting random shit over it in like the messiest way is kind of sad to look back on because it, it doesn't show like that I respected myself or loved myself and like this was many years ago now and looking back at it, you know, it's sad. I'm sad that I felt that way about myself back then, but um, you learn and you grow and um, lesson of the day, I guess. So. <laughs> And then we have some more of those figure drawing, probably the same session. So these were again, five minutes. So we have that aspect of quickness and painterliness. But then I think over here, we started doing 10 minute poses. These ones are kind of cool. I think I was playing with like using um, warmer colors for the parts of the body that would come forward the most and then blue for what should recede, um, which was a concept that we were learning about so yeah, these were cool. It's nice to see how the painting kind of grows in charm the more time that is spent on it. And I feel like I, I was pretty satisfied with these and wanted to try with them. Um, and then some more. So these are, okay, this one was 10 minutes again. And then I think all of these were 15 minutes. So you can start to see, I think I'm bringing in some like pencil crayon and I'm you know, being more intentional with like skin tones and my use of like red and blue and things like that. I really like these. Um, I think they're, you know, well done. I think the figure drawings are nice and like proportionate and, you know, a lot of attention was paid. And then the, the paint was um, just a little added touch of artistic goodness. I really like this one in particular. I think it's great. I think I like took this and like cut it out um, or like took a photo of it and included it in my um, portfolio or something down the road. That's how much I liked it. Um, and then a final one. I think this, this must have been the final 15 minute one as well. Same kind of thing. I really like it. I think it's great. Good job, me. <laughs> it's messy, but you know, still, I think it's charming. Um, and then yeah, random brush pen drawing. And then Dead Bird Society. So keep this on the down low, but I don't think he was actually allowed to do this. We had to like, or I think at one point it was okay, but then they were like, stop doing that. But then we kept doing it. My, <laughs> one of my profs, shout out Carl Geist once again. He was a big fan of like animals and drawing animals and things like that. And he loved like bringing in uh, dead birds to the class. And we would all like, he would bring in a few and then set them down on like different tables and things. And then we would all like sit around and paint them. It was like this like after school club or whatever that was like very cute and very fun. <laughs> okay, that sounds gross, but like he, he like, these, these dead birds were like preserved. Like he brought them in in like um, coolers. So he kept them frozen and things. He didn't kill the birds, not at all. Like he would find them either like on his walks with his dogs and his dogs would find them or like, I don't know. He had his ways, but it was very wholesome, I promise. Um, and it was great. I think it was like a very fun, cool way that he like shared his passion for drawing animals with his students. And then this was a, another spread of 
just figures, I think. I just wanted to like fill up a spread because maybe we had like a quota to hit with like how many pages in our sketchbook we had to do for this class. So I remember I did this before my multimedia class very quickly. I just like drew in a bunch of pencil and then blocked in a bunch of color and then drew in some more details with brush pen. So pretty quick, not very much effort went into this, but you know, it's fine. It is what it is. And then this next page, I think one of our projects was to do like master studies of paintings that existed. So this must have been like a test run of um, one of those paintings. It must be an acrylic. Yeah, it's fine. I was just trying to like the painting. I think that I was looking at had a very specific kind of like soft kind of t -t 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 style, you know, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, and then I guess I just taped in some reference images that I liked of like Yukioe prints. Um, we have another Dead Bird Society over here. This one's just a little scraggly guy. Ooh, and we have the date here. March 10th, 2017. Holy guacamole. So long ago. Yeah, I forgot to mention I started this sketchbook in 2017 and I just finished it like yesterday. <laughs> in 2023 okay so she's she's lived quite the life all right and then the next few pages i believe so this is my friend tori hi tori if you're watching i don't know if she watched my videos i think our final project in that multimedia class was to follow around a classmate for the day and then like do a bunch of different portraits of like them living their life in different locations and things like that. So in preparation for that, I like followed her around one day and um, just did studies of her um, in different like locations that she frequents, mostly downtown and things like that. So that was really fun. I love drawing her. She has such a pretty, beautiful face. And yeah, I especially love drawing her, her profile um, side of her face because like I said, I really love that kind of thing. And yeah, so these were, you know, just me following her around, drawing her. I believe I just like sketched quickly with pencil when I was actually with her and then painted later. Yeah, more of this. I think, yeah, with these ones I was doing literal local color. And then here, I think I, I don't know, got tired of painting the entire thing, so I just lazily filled in blocks of color to make the spread look a little more interesting and not just pencil. Um, something about painting on this like nice thick paper makes me feel bad when I just do like pencil drawing. Um, like it makes me want to add some sort of like thickness or like paint or like different kinds of media and things like that. So yeah, and then just some more of that. So. Ta-da! <laughs> um, hopefully you can see this. I'll include little clips of detail and things like that, but I'm not sure what the final piece actually looked like. I can't even picture it in my head. Um, so I'm not sure if I even have that to show you, but if I can find it, I'll put it here. But yeah. And then these next couple pages are... Okay, so this must have been going into... Uh, a class in the next semester. It was a environments class and I think I just wanted to play with multimedia or maybe it was like a part of the project to play with multimedia. But anyways, I thought I would make use of this handmade sketchbook. But yeah, I think this project was to draw the same scene like a week spread apart for multiple weeks. Or maybe it was just one week, I don't know. There must have been more that I just didn't do, maybe. Um, but I think it was like the beginning of fall. So we wanted to capture like the changing of the trees and yada yada. And so I picked this little park area that I would go and walk my dog um, around. And so here we have Dum Dum. We've all seen Dum Dum in my vlogs. Um, he lives with my mom, so I guess he's not technically my dog. Uh, again, I think I was playing with gouache here and I had no fucking idea what I was doing. Again, this one's like very muddy. Not a lot of effort or maybe not enough effort spent. Um, we were supposed to like go and paint there. Like it was supposed to be like plein air painting, but I did not do that. I just took a photo with my phone because like my dog was with me. Like I was just fucking walking my dog, right? So yeah, these are from photo and I think they're fine. They're fine. 
Okay, these next few ones were again for that environments class. We needed to draw like um, different scenes in the school with like different genres. So I think this one was, okay, yeah, so it says, so this one's supposed to be like a gangster film. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> this one is a post-apocalyptic. I think I finished it in digital. This is like the roof um, turned upside down, trying to like make like a kind of dystopian uh, kind of cyberpunk setting. And then this is melodrama. I literally had no idea what I was doing here. This is with acrylic, I believe. And then, yeah, this is ink. It's supposed to be a slasher film. It looks so bad. It's I, I, I think I didn't get a very good grade on this because I did not try at all. And then this is romance. It's all just like pink and fluffy and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then this was another project that we had to do. This was supposed to be plain air again, I believe. This was kind of cool. It's like a nice memory that I did. Um, I went out to, so I live in Calgary, Alberta, so we're right beside the Rocky Mountains. Um, so I drove out to uh, Kananaskis, which is like the closest kind of national park to us, and went to like a little hiking area and drew, um, I believe it was like a lake and then some forest and then a mountain in the background. And my plan was to go out there and paint the whole thing, but I went out there with my paints and kind of got situated. And I tried like drawing outside on like a patio table, but holy moly, it was way too cold. I went out pretty early in the morning and I think it was like spring, early spring maybe. And, uh, or no, it must've been fall or getting into winter. I don't know, something like that. Um, and so I like went inside my car and tried painting and then I was like, okay, fuck this. So I went home and then I, and then I finished it from home. And then this painting is similar, a lot more um, successful if I do say so myself. This is watercolor. Um, and this was just like a house that I saw on the way out. So it's in like the far kind of rural areas outside my city. Um, it looks like just like a barn or something. And I remember just like pulling off on the side of the road and like taking photos, like walking up in the tall grass up to this fence and then taking photos. So that was kind of cool. And I like how it turned out. And then this next page is just like a bunch of planning. I think for this, um, this painting, we had to do like a calm setting and then turn it into a different kind of vibe in another uh, medium or using another media. So yeah, again, if I can find this, this, uh, this project, I will put it here. I did it digitally and um, yeah, I think this was a very successful project for me. Um, and then this is just a page of like, you can barely see this shit. <laughs> this is just a page of figure drawing, quick ones, I believe. These must have been like super quick because I didn't even do paint on them. Um, and then the next page, some more with some added paint. We must have had another figure draw drawing model um, come in and pose for us. These all look very quick. So that's cool. Oh, I remember this model. She was so cool. She was like, she must have been like 50 or 60, but she was like ripped, like really good shape. Like it was crazy. Um, yeah, she was cool. Uh, some more figure drawing. She must have been doing like quick one minute or two minute poses of just like moving, like getting down or like getting up and like, you know, changing poses. So that's kind of cool. It's like a little time lapse of movement. Yeah, some more of that. This must have been like a bit of a longer pose. Yeah, this one's just brush pen. This one's okay, meh, whatever. And then, all right, <laughs> one last one. Okay, appreciate her, lovely, great. The next few pages are just me um, using a brush pen and also ink, trying to create like a little logo thingy for Brandon. Um, when we first started dating, I helped him work on like this kind of brand for himself for like his, his drifting and things like that. He, he kind of wanted to do like an independent brand before he joined his, his team. And so this was just me literally filling up spreads of just the same shit over and over and over. <laughs> so 
yeah, if I, if I can find what we ended up doing with that, here's some photos for context. And then, yeah, after that, I feel like I closed the sketchbook up, tucked it away for years, and then picked it up again. So from this spread, we are 2020 onwards, and I feel like I just got an urge to do a painting, something physical. My, my comfort zone is digital or just like pencil in a sketchbook, and every once in a while I get an urge to play with paint or think like, oh, it'd be so nice if I was like somebody who painted, you know? Um, so it must have been one of those urges that I had. This is fine, like it's, it's very kind of safe, I think for me, watercolor and pencil crayon, but you know, I applaud myself for the effort. And then probably honestly like, okay, so this is 2021 now. So literally like a, over a year later, probably. Um, I wanted to play with gouache and so I did another um, Portrait type thing probably a reference that I found on Pinterest. Yeah, this is, this is using that uh, Reeves gouache that I that I um, Don't really enjoy and don't think is the best, but also I don't understand gouache that much. So maybe it's just me um, I think the final piece ended up turning out fine. It's just you know just kind of whatever and then this spread is actually pretty recent, um, must be like a few months old or something that I did last year. Um, this was for some client work, some, some client illustrations that we ended up not going with. But yeah, I just wanted to play with, I don't know, doing something traditionally and like getting that um, very authentic texture. I feel like with like if, if you want to do illustrations with a specific style that um, mimics traditional media, the best way to do that is to actually do it in that traditional media rather than like trying to emulate it digitally. I feel like doing it in a traditional way um, feels a lot more, like I said, authentic and, and has a lot more soul. That's kind of like what I was doing with um, those restaurant illustrations that I had in in probably like a couple vlogs ago. Yeah, we we had some digital drawings of, of those illustrations, but I thought it would be worth it to explore doing, you know, doing those drawings in, in actual pastel or crayon or whatever, just to like get that authentic texture. And then, yeah, this spread, I was like kind of having an interest in like sumie ink and like Japanese kind of calligraphic uh, style of painting and things like that. Um, something about like calligraphic style is very attractive to me. I like how like quick it is and like effortless. Um, it's a lot harder than it looks for sure, uh, which we can like see here, my, my attempt at that. And then this was me again playing with sumie ink and I'm um, trying to apply it in what I usually do, my subject of choice, which is cute girls. Um, it's fine, it's a little chunky, a little unrefined, but you know, whatever. We're just playing, you know? And then this guy, if you saw my... <laughs> it was age restricted because I said the F word too many times, but if you saw my um, how to give less fucks video, this is what I was working on. Um, it's like a giant canvas piece using ink. Um, again, I'll, I'll find like a screenshot or something from that video and put it here so you can see. And then this one I worked on just like randomly, I think. Um, I felt like trying out gouache again. Um, and this was last year, just a few months ago. And it was fine, you know, like I think when I approached this drawing, gouache in my mind was closer to acrylic than watercolor. Um, but in reality, I feel like it's better to approach it uh, as watercolor first and then try and build some opacity on top of that but primarily like I don't know after playing with gouache a little bit more I think it is mm, much closer to watercolor than than acrylic for sure and then yeah so we're getting into those spreads that I worked on in that um, last video that I talked about the one finishing the sketchbook um, so if you saw that video you'll know these pages but yeah, we'll just go through them quickly. So yeah, these last few pages I did in just the last couple months. Um, I wanted to finish off the sketchbook and also challenge myself to learn how to use gouache a little better. 
so <laughs> this is all with gouache and pencil crayon i feel like those two materials pair really well together like a gouache base and then add detailing with um something that you can have a little bit more control with like pencil crayon is really good so yeah i enjoyed you know building this it was my first kind of time trying to do any sort of like detailed portrait with gouache and like really take it seriously and try and be very refined in my strokes and things like that and so that was cool especially coming from like what we just looked at like my mm, exploration with painting so far had been very like quick and low effort and not a lot of refinement um so now trying to like take it a little more seriously was you know it, it really opened my eyes a little bit um like of course if you are more careful with something or take more time with it um obviously it'll turn out better um and then yeah so this is just another spread i felt like drawing a doberman because something about a doberman's like shapes and things are so fun and so cool yeah a lot of learning with like color and how colors overlay like the the red background and the green on top is why we're getting this like muddiness which is like we talked about before that's just how colors interact and i should have known better but for some reason i thought the the green pencil crown would be a lot more opaque than it was which makes no sense and then yeah i just drew a bunch of like little demon guys who are so cute and i love i love hymns um and then just another portrait of a lady this one's a lot more flat um, but I wanted to, you know, play with pencil crayon and like really get that like kind of uh, scribbly texture, I guess, with it and make it feel very like, I don't know the word, not an abstract, but you know, crafty almost and a little less like serious. And then this next page, um, this one, I wanted to try like building out the body a little more like fully than what was going on in this last one. I feel like this last portrait was very flat. Like, I guess there is like some definition in the forms of her face, but for the most part, it's just like yellow. And then everything else, like all of the other details are just with pencil crayon or um, solid shape. So with this uh, painting, I wanted to try, you know, like actually painting in the light and the shadow and building that dimension with the paint and not leaning so hard on pencil crayon and I'm really happy with how it turned out I think you know spending that extra time to to use the paint to build out the entire illustration um paid off and I I I'm proud of this one and then this next page was uh just I don't know I forget what was going on but I just wanted to draw rabbits <laughs> Um, this was in preparation for my gallery show. I think that video should be out already at this point. Yeah, my, my friend invited me to participate in his uh, gallery show, his first one, Nest. Um, I believe they're going to have a bunch more shows, so if you're in Calgary area, definitely check them out. But yeah, I thought I would do some rabbit studies and I didn't want to like overcomplicate it or I, I think I just needed a break from life or something, so I just used pencil crayons and then I came back to this again and then added like a painted kind of background rabbit. So there you go. This spread is cool. Um, this was a reference from like if you peruse Pinterest at all for like cool reference photos and things like that, I'm sure you will have seen um, this kind of vibe. It's like there's it's a series of photographs of like women in like a pond with like giant these like giant lily pads and like leaves and things like that covering their bodies it's really cool yeah I, I chose one of those photos and then decided to like paint it this is with gouache again and pencil crayon um building this out with was like quite the process yeah i feel like when you're playing with like actual paints and things like that you have to have a lot of patience and like reassure yourself that like the steps getting to the final piece will probably look bad you know like you're not going to have glimpses of your final piece probably until your last step um because really this this illustration didn't end up coming together until like i added in this black and the black was like the last step and it it's what gave it that um that contrast so yeah all in all i think it's a great spread um really happy with it i think it looks cool next spread i wanted to paint a flower because flowers are easy <laughs> 
kind of, not really. I don't know. When I when I first painted this, I was very mm, unamused. I was disappointed in myself. I didn't like how it turned out. Like it was fine. And then I came back to the spread and then painted this lady over here. This is Lovisa Lager. I mentioned her in my um, sketchbook ideas video. Very fun. Lots of fun like body shapes and like defining shapes and things like that. I did try my best to like build the body with paint originally um, and then I ended up going over it with pencil crayon just to like further define it and I think it turned out well I think it's great yeah just like a balance of paint and like looseness and detail and like solid shapes I think is a vibe that is not too hard to execute but can really bring a piece to life, if that makes sense. Like I feel like this um, this painting without the blue block in the background would be kind of like not as impactful. But with that dark background in the in the background of behind her, you can see like the shape of her body really like popping. So an easy way to to take something and and make it feel a little more finished. And then yeah, after this, I just drew in some like leaves and things like that, and that's when I added the outline on the flower. And then I like this page a lot more. <laughs> something about just like adding those little decorative elements can really take something and um, give it a little something extra. And then this spread I feel like was pretty quick. I drew all of the, the figures at the same time and then kind of like painted them all at the same time and then detailed them all at the same time. So it was just something that I, like, I wanted to fill a spread quickly and not think about it too hard, so I went back to my comfort zone of just drawing figures, and yeah, I think it's fine. I, I like drawing figures, I like how they look on a spread, so yeah, I think it's fine to give yourself breaks and like not make up these like strict rules for yourself that really don't matter. It's all about, you know, having fun, and if you want to learn something new, then challenging yourself, but also not too much because if if you like overdo it then you'll end up hating the thing <laughs> and then yeah this spread was using ink um ink was very fresh in my mind because i used it primarily for that gallery piece that i was talking about and um this is india ink i believe and yeah i think ink is like a kind of low pressure way to practice playing with um like those water solvent paints like watercolor or gouache um, it's good practice like diluting the ink to like a certain opacity and then laying it down on the paper and then pushing it around with more water without having to like think about color and things like that. So yeah, I like how these turned out. Um, this one especially I think is really cool. This was a, like a really fun reference to use because it had these like strong hard shadows and things like that. So the body looks very like, I don't know, dynamic and real in a sense that it like exists somewhere because of the shadow and like very dimensional you know what i mean so yeah and then i just went in with some some this like red marker that i have just to like add a pop of color in the spread for aesthetics you know and then this spread i think i was just like ugh, stressed from life and i didn't want to think too hard or like focus on having to draw faces or anything so i just drew a bunch of little animals and cats and things. Um, this one I talked about in my my multimedia video. Um, it was very tough, like the reference that I chose was very difficult because it's like the color palette is crazy. Um, going green to red and then blue in the middle, it's kind of like a wacky color palette and especially the blend from green to red is very difficult. So I ended up saving it with, with some pencil crayon. Not like my best piece, but it is like kind of an interesting thing to have and I'm glad I did it. I feel like I learned a lot from it. And then, yeah, th th these ones are just, you know, this one's so cute, it's so funny. <laughs> just some like low pressure cats and I don't know what these are. Brandon said they're salamanders, but I don't actually know. I thought there were lizards or something, but... And then, uh, ta-da, you guys, this is the last spread. This is the one that I did yesterday. Um, this one is just like, I don't know, something very simple. I was just coming off of like a migraine and wanted to do something easy for my brain, so I did these like 
squares of clouds and plants and it was fine and very satisfying and just like very like mind turned off which was nice and then this last one um telling myself that this was going to be the last piece that i was going to do in the sketchbook for now i mean i still have like a few more pages um but i'll just use those whenever i want to but you know to take the pressure off of myself of like actually finishing the sketchbook in this uh limited time frame telling myself this that this was the last one i wanted to make it good and i wanted it to you know be something that i was proud of and i can proudly say that i i did that um i spent a lot of time looking at my reference and making sure that i got the face right and then building it out with the paint and then adding the very like graphic feeling pencil crayon on top i really like how it turned out and um i'm i'm glad that it turned out the way that it did this being my last portrait in in the sketchbook so there it is folks that's all that's all it is i gotta update this i don't know why i put 2018 like i wasn't gonna draw on it ever again let me and there it is Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing this long-awaited multimedia sketchbook tour. I feel like this is the sketchbook that was like keeping me from moving on to my other sketchbooks because I numbered them um, and I would move on to sketchbooks after I was actually finished the one before. So I felt like I couldn't, like my last sketchbook tour was sketchbook number three. So I felt like I couldn't move on to sketchbook number five until four was finished. So I'm glad that this is done. Here it is. And you can look forward to my next sketchbook tours in the future. That's all. Thank you again. Um, if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. As always, thank you. Um, yes, that's all for now. Thank you very much again. And I will see you guys in a bit. <laughs>